positions in the investigation of President Clinton. Tonight we are airing the tapes released today by the House Judiciary Committee. Next, Secret Service agent Michael Tyler. His testimony is about two hours. Hey, can you tell us your full name and spell it, please? Uh, William Michael Tyler, T-Y-L-E-R. Okay. And um, I'm first going to advise you of some of your rights. You are being depo deposed today in lieu of a grand jury appearance. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. And this proceeding will be made available to the grand jury, and it is being conducted under the federal rules of criminal procedure. You have the right to have your attorneys present outside the room, and in fact you have um, four attorneys present outside the room. Is that right? Uh, s yeah, several uh, for Justice Department and also personal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you know their names? Ann Wiseman, um, Mike Leibig, uh, the other the other ones I'm not specifically sure of the full names. Okay, Jonathan Schwartz, do you know? Mm -hmm. Mr. Yes, Schwartz correct. and um, Janice Kestenbaum? Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, three of those are from the Department of Justice and Mr. Leibig is private attorney, is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. okay, if you wish to meet with any of them or confer with them at any time during the questions today, you, you can ask to have a break and do so. Understand that? Yes. Okay. And you have the right not to answer any questions, the truthful answer to which would incriminate you. Do you understand that? Yes. And um, you do have an obligation to tell the truth. You may be prosecuted for perjury if you lie, if you are misleading, or if you answer, I don't know, or I don't remember, if in fact you do know or you do remember. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And you understand all these rights that I've explained to you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> And um, in addition, um, we have agreed with the Department of Justice that we will not pose any questions to you that seek information regarding protective techniques or procedures of the Secret Service, including security technologies, armaments, or devices within or around the White House complex. Do you understand that? Yes. And if any questions that any of us ask you today call for any such information, please advise us of that, okay? Okay. All right. In addition to that, um, we understand that there are certain privileged uh, matters, certain privileged information to which um, you will not be testifying today, and we will attempt in our questions to avoid asking you for that privileged information. Um, but I or Mr. Page may ask you questions um, that do call for privileged information, and if that's the case, um, please let us know and assert the privilege or step outside. Um, and consult with your lawyers and and let us know what you've decided to do. Okay? Yes? Yes. Okay, you just have to answer verbally. Um, are you currently employed? Yes. And where are you employed? The uh, Department of Treasury, United States Secret Service. Okay, and can you keep your voice up? Yes. All right, and yeah. um, how long have you been with the Secret Service? Uh, that three years, uh, July 10th, 1995. Okay, and um, in what capacity do you work there? Uh, uniform Division Officer. Okay, <coughs> and um, what have been your duties with the Secret Service over the, th the almost three years that you've been with them? Uh, well, um, first is the training process that you go through. Um, then uh, when you become operational, uh, I was unassigned. I, I could uh, be assigned to any, any location uh, that is covered. Uh, at the White House complex. Um, okay. For what period were you unassigned? Um, uh, approximately a year. Uh, that's real approximate. I'm not exactly sure. And when did you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. And when did you receive an assignment? Was what I was going to ask you. Uh, June around June twentieth of last year. And uh, did I cut you off? Is there anything else you wanted to say before? I don't recall. No. Okay. So June 20th of 1997, you received an assignment, yes. correct? And what was that? Uh, that was the assignment uh, at the, uh, the Oval Office uh, in the West Wing. Okay. And um, during the period that you were unassigned, were you generally working in the White House? Yes. Okay. And a person who's unassigned um, is available for what types of assignments? How does that work when you're unassigned? Uh, you could be assigned to almost any post located down there um, I, they tend to will they will tend to uh, not assign you to something that requires a uh, specialized training but that's not always you know the case so 
pretty much anything down there around the White House complex, uh, White House, uh, old executive office building, Treasury. Now, during the period that you were unassigned, um, that would be from when to June of 97? Approximately when did you begin your period of unassigned work at the White House? Uh, around um, December of 95, if I believe that's correct. Okay, so approximately a year and a half of unassigned work. Were there any particular um, assignments that, that, you, that you got when you were unassigned? Any particular places you were posted? Um, are you asking that I would be posted more often than yeah. others? Yes. Um, from time to time, uh, I was in the uh, control center uh, more, uh, you know, quite a bit, uh, some of the time. Uh, also in the, um, the West Wing. Um, and Anywhere in particular in the West Wing? Uh, Spent a lot of time um, relative to the unassigned uh, around the Oval Office, um, uh, but also could be other other posts within there. You know, it uh, just seemed like I spent uh, a fair amount of time there. What is the name of the post around the Oval Office that you had? Okay, and that was a post that you frequently had when you were unassigned. Uh, frequently, yeah, more frequently uh, than probably a lot of the other ones, uh, if, you know. Okay. Um, what other West Wing assignments have you had during your unassigned period? Um, there's one at the press area, the uh, West Lobby. Uh, the press area is... Yes. And um, the West Wing Lobby is... Yes, that's correct. Okay, and... Um, and then... Which is where? Uh, it's down in the, uh, the ground level, uh, so to speak, of uh, the West Wing. Okay. Now, when, what, when you were unassigned, what tours would you work, generally? Uh, it, it all depended on that. I mean, that's uh, normally would be the, the day work and, and three o'clock section, but that's not to say that there was not some midnights in there also. Okay, when you say the day tour, would you rotate um, your day shifts from early morning to the afternoon, or...? Yeah, it would, uh, one week you would work uh, day work, and then one week you would work uh, 3 o'clock. Now, that wasn't the whole, that whole year and a half, um, but uh, that was a big part of it. Really. Now, you said that in June of 97, you received a permanent assignment, and that was to where? To the overall office post. Okay. And that's been your assignment to date? Yes. And what tour do you work there? Uh, rotating, uh, one week of day work and then one week of uh, three o'clock. Okay. okay. <clears throat> and the day work begins approximately what time? Uh, Six thirty. Okay. And lasts until approximately what time? Approximately two thirty. And the afternoon shift begins at approximately what time? Two thirty. And ends at approximately what time? Ten thirty. And when you say rotating, you do generally one week of each on a rotating yes. basis. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have steady days off, regular days off? Yes, and Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay, and has that been the case throughout your time at the White House? No. No? No. How long has that been the case? Uh, since the uh, permanent assignment took effect. Okay, and before that? Uh, it could be Monday, Tuesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, or... Okay. <coughs> I guess. Okay. Um, can you explain where the post is? The uh, post physically itself, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, uh, right outside of the Oval Office uh, main door. Um, and, and that post also encompasses uh, another one uh, that is... And when do you move from... Whenever, uh, whenever the president um, comes to the office and the, uh, the special agent assumes... Uh, Where is it specifically? How would you describe it? Uh, outside the uh, president's dining room door in the hallway. Okay. And is the pantry also in that area? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's the pantry where the, the president's stewards work? Yes. And um, does the pantry um, have a door that leads out into the... Out into the well, well, let me take that back for a minute. Um, is he a post in a hallway? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And does the doorway from um, 
Is there a doorway from the pantry that leads out into that hallway where you're posted? Yes. Okay. And um, the study is also in the vicinity of the dining room, is that right? Yes. Okay. Now, um, do you know Monica Lewinsky? I do not know her personally, no. Okay. Have you ever seen her in person? Uh, I believe this will get into a, an area that's uh, under the advice, it's under the protective uh, area. Okay, so you're, you're asserting the protective function privilege in response to that question. Um, okay. Can you tell us, and you may consult with your attorney on this if you wish to, on how many occasions, or with respect to how many occasions you are asserting this privilege? And if you wish to step out of the room and consult with the roommate. You're off the record 24802. Back right. on the record at 25259. Okay, Officer Tyler, um, have you had an opportunity to consult with your lawyers? Yes. Outside the room? Yes. And the question that was pending um, was can you state as to how many occasions um, you are asserting the protective function privilege with respect to um, having seen Monica Lewinsky in person? Well, it'll, it will depend on how many questions I'm asked uh, in, in that certain, certain area. Oh, well, I'm asking you um, on how many occasions have you seen Monica Lewinsky in person? Uh, outside of the protective uh, privilege, none. Okay, and can you state within the privileged times, approximately how many times there were that you saw her that you're taking the privilege? Um, that would be, uh, you may, I don't know if I'm, uh, you may want to consult with them on that. I'm, I'm, I don't want to get into a... Okay, let's take uh, a quick break. I'll just, I'll ask the question. Off the record, 254 or 6. Okay. I, uh, I Back on record, 258.34. Okay, um, officer, you've had an opportunity to consult with your lawyers again? Yes. Okay, and, and with respect to the pending question, which was, can you state um, how many incidents um with respect to how many incidents you're taking this privilege with advice from counsel i'm going to assert the privilege on that okay um have you ever seen monica lewinsky in a situation with respect to which you are not taking the privilege no have you ever seen her outside of the white house no um and the privilege you are asserting for the record is the protective function privilege yes um, okay. Do you know Bayani Nelvis? Yes. And um, can you tell us who he is? Uh, he works in presidential food service uh, as one of the stewards that, uh, that feeds the president. Okay. And how well do you know him? Uh, on a uh, friendly working uh, relationship, uh, you know, friends with him. Okay. Uh, through work. And um, so you say you're friends with him through work, is that right? Yes. Okay. And um, about how long have you known him? Uh, well, I've known him ever since I, uh, uh, the time I, during which I was unassigned. Um, yeah, that was when I was first introduced to him, so um, well over a year okay. uh, through work. And um, have you ever socialized with him outside the White House? No. The House Judiciary Committee has edited out certain portions of this testimony for security and privacy reasons. The testimony will continue in a moment. The House Judiciary Committee has edited out certain portions of this testimony for security and privacy reasons. The testimony will continue in a moment.
are within that perimeter. Exactly. Is that yes. Correct? All right. And when you say they rely on you, what types of things do the stewards rely on you for? Uh, well, uh, so they know when he's uh, en route to the office or uh, um, his locations. Uh, if they know they need to prepare any food or anything like that, or you know, have a little bit of advance notice on anything, that, that okay. sort of thing. Okay, when you say his location, you're referring to the president? Yes. And that's information that you're generally aware of through your radio, is that right? Yes. Um, what types of things do you talk, have you talked to Bayani Nelvis about, aside from your official business of, of um, your work functions? Uh, you ask for anything specific, uh, we, we, we talk uh, about a lot of, you know, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Like what? Uh, cars, uh, uh, financial things, uh, um, just general conversations. Um, it's good family matters. Does he tell you anything about his family you tell him? Just nothing uh, specific, but sometimes. Uh, um, Sports, that sort of thing? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you know Glenn Mays? Yes. Um, and who is he? Uh, he is uh, another one of the uh, stewards for, uh, for the president that uh, serves in the, his food and so forth that works there. And the president has two stewards, is that correct? Uh, two that mainly work there, yes. Okay. How well do you know Glenn Mays? Uh, friends, uh, friendly working relationship. And which of these two stewards, Glenn Mays and Bonnie Nelvis, are you closer to? Uh, Mr. Nelvis. Um, and do you know Glenn Mays about as long as you know Bayani Nelvis? Or? Approximately, yes. Now, um, do you know of any relationship between Bayani Nelvis and Monica Lewinsky? Uh, according to uh, what he has said, uh, they were friends. When you say he, you mean Bayani Nelvis? Yes. Um, what has Bayani Nelvis told you about his relationship with Monica Lewinsky? Uh, well, that they're friends, if that's, if that's what you're asking. Well, what I'm asking is, is what did Mr. Nelvis tell you about his relationship with, with Monica Lewinsky, his friendship with her? That they were friends and uh, that they spoke from time to time. Uh, um, and okay. that, that they uh, uh, would have met before, uh, I believe is what he said also. That they what? They've met before, you know, outside the, uh, the job. Okay. And when you say outside the job, you mean outside the White House? Mm-hmm. Okay. So they had socialized outside the White House? According to him. Okay. Yes. What did he tell you about, um, about that? Did he give you any details about where they had gone outside the White House, what they had done? Just maybe grab a bite to eat or something to drink. Uh, uh, that's all that I can... Really recall, you know, like to eat something to drink someplace. And do you know about how many times um, Bayani and Elvis told you he had met outside the White House with Monica Lewinsky? No, if I was, from what I can recall, if I was to make a guess, you know, two or three times, that's not specific. Did Ms. I'm sorry, continue. Nothing, you know, specific, I can, hard and fast number. Did Mr. Nelvis um, mention to you on more than one occasion that he had met or was meeting Monica outside the White House? This is something uh, that came up more than once. From what I can recall, I would say yes. Well, I okay, about how many times? Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe two or three. I, I don't want to just limit it to, to one, but I don't know a specific uh, number, but it's two or three times. Okay, when uh, you said that Mr. Nelvis told you that he spoke to Monica from time to time, um, did he mean in person or some other way? Uh, both. Both in person and? And, and uh, by a phone or however else. Okay. Were you aware that Monica, were you aware that Monica Lewinsky was someone who had worked at the White House at one point? Yes. Okay. And um, when she worked at the White House, was, were, you, were you working at the White House, if you know? I don't know. Uh, 
I'm not sure of the, of the times that she was working there, so I don't, I don't know. Do you know whether when you first became aware of Monica Lewinsky, whether she was an employee of the White House at that time or a former employee? I can't say for sure. When Mr. Nelvis would talk to you about her, about Monica, um, was it your understanding that she was working somewhere else at that time? Yes. Where was she working? Uh, Pentagon. Uh, <laughs> And when Mr. Nelvis, you said, um, would tell you that he, he spoke to Monica from time to time, you said it was both in person and on the phone, is that correct? From what I can recall, yes. Do you know, um, with respect to their telephone conversations, where each of them was when those conversations would take place? Did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you where, where he was when Monica would call him? Uh, there was one time uh, that uh, he was working there at the, at the pantry, uh, beyond that, we, that I recall, we never got into any specifics. <clears throat> All right, when you say Mr. Nelvis was working in the pantry, were you present that day? I believe there was one time that I was, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. But mm -hmm. I, I believe there was one time. Okay, is this a conversation that Mr. Nelvis told you about after it took place, or, or did you walk in on it? This would have been after. Okay. And, um... How did Mr. Nevels tell you about that conversation? What did he say? Just that, um, that I, I had just spoken with her, that was her on the phone, something along those lines. Okay, so Ms. you're saying Mr. Nelvis said to you um, that he, Mr. Nelvis, had just spoken to Monica on the telephone? Yes. And that was just her? Yes, okay. something along those lines, yes. Was that because you had walked by and seen Mr. Nelvis on the telephone? Um, I don't I can't really put a specific uh, reason why uh, that would have come up. It, um, it may have been we were uh, talking about something that involved her. It may have not. Uh, I, I don't recall. Um, have you ever seen Mr. Nelvis on the telephone um, when he told you either during the conversation or afterwards that it was Monica he was speaking to? I believe the one, the time that I just mentioned, I, if I recall correctly, um, I think I remember seeing him in there talking on the phone. Uh, whether he, who he was talking to at that time, I don't know. But later you learned it was Monica? Yes. And you learned that from Mr. Nelvis? Yes. And um, when you say in there, do you mean in the pantry? Yes. There's a telephone in the pantry? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, other than, did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you anything that he spoke to Monica about on the telephone? There was, there was one time where just in a general conversation, uh, the question came up um, uh, what they were talking about, and uh, he made the comment that it was uh, 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 that, well, no, let me back up. On, on that, um, that would have probably been uh, that she, um, a conversation concerning her wanting to come in and see him uh, or, or the president uh, or wanting to come in uh, to the West Wing. Okay. On, um, on that, on that let, let me ask some questions so that I can understand this. Um, okay. You're saying there was another telephone conversation that Bionni Nelvis had with Monica Lewinsky other than the one that you just mentioned? The, were, the one I just ago. mentioned um, was one that once he got off the phone, he, mm -hmm. he told me about. Uh, then he made reference to another phone call. Uh, I can't say whether it was the same phone call or another phone call um, at a different time. But uh, So let me get this straight. So you're saying that at some point you walked past the pantry, you saw Mr. Nelvis on the phone, mm -hmm. and he afterwards mentioned to you that he was on the phone with Monica. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, while we're talking about that incident, do you remember when that occurred? It seems like it may have been around Christmas time because that's when I would recall when I can remember um, a lot of different things occurring, but I, I can't be specific. Uh, Christmas of what year? Of 97. Okay, so it's past Christmas. Yes. And when you say Christmas time, do you mean, what do you mean? November, December time frame. Okay, and when you say you, you remember a lot of things happening then, what do you mean? Well. Um, concerning uh, the uh, 
uh, issue at the Northwest Gate. Okay. Um, and then uh, some, you know, just a, some talk at that time. With Bionni Nelvis? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, all right, so other than that one time when you walked past the pantry, saw Mr. Nelvis on the phone, and later he told you it was Monica, um, you also have a memory, you say, about a telephone conversation between Mr. Nelvis and Monica that Mr. Nelvis told you about. Is that right? Yeah, this he made, that he made uh, reference to. I don't know if it was one phone call or many phone calls or, I, I, you know, no specifics on it, but... What did he tell you? Uh, well, the question was asked, um, uh, just in general, uh, you know, what, what um, they would talk about, um, and uh, the president and uh, uh, Mr. Lewinsky, and uh, he said uh, it would involve sex or sexual relation, you know, sexual, had a sexual content to it. Okay. Um, all right, so um, are you saying that Mr. Nelvis told you that he had a telephone conversation with Monica Lewinsky during which Miss Lewinsky told Mr. Nelvis that she was having telephone conversations with the president about sexual matters? Well, he, he made the statement that... Um, Who is he? he? Nelvis. Okay. Mr. Nelvis uh, made the statement that, uh, um, that he knew or had learned, I don't know how, how he learned, whether she told him whatever, um, that that was going, that that, that conversation had taken place. I'm, I'm assuming that she told him that, but I don't know specifics okay. on where he got that information from. But just so that we're clear, um, does this have anything to do, what you're telling me now, have anything to do with a telephone conversation between Mr. Nelvis and Monica? Is this information given it, it, to Mr. It, Nelvis on the telephone by Monica? That's you know? what I, that's, I don't know for sure, but that's just what, the way I took it. Okay. Do you know why you took it that way? Do you remember <clears throat> what Mr. Nelvis said that made you think that? Um, if I recall correctly, <clears throat> it was there again uh, on an issue of uh, her wanting to come in, and uh, uh, and then somehow the conversation started about telephone conversations, and that's what that's what it was said. I, I'm specifics. I'm. I don't have a lot of specifics on. I just just remember that that incident, uh, or that, that statement being made. Okay, so, so you're saying that um, Mr. Nelvis told you about a telephone conversation between him and Monica, during which Monica told Mr. Nelvis that she wanted to come into the White House. Is that correct? If I recall correctly, yes. All right, and um, did Mr. Nelvis tell you why Monica wanted to come into the White House? I believe, it's a, uh, there again, I believe it was around Christmas time um, and if I, recall if I recall correctly, it was because it was Christmas time and um, she wanted to see him uh, in, rela in relation to uh, the holiday, Christmas, uh, for whatever reason, when you if say I recall want, correctly. When you say wanted to see him, the who president. did Monica want to see? The president. Okay. So Mr. Nelvis told you um, that he had a telephone conversation with Monica Lewinsky during which Ms. Lewinsky told Bionni Nelvis that she wanted to come into the White House to see the President in relation to Christmas matters. I would call him mentioning a conversation about that, yes. Okay. Did Bionni Nelvis tell you whether Monica wanted to see the President about anything other than Christmas matters? Okay. You have to answer verbally. No. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Now, um, during this conversation that you had with Mr. Nelvis about the phone call he had with Monica, during which she expressed a, a desire to come in and see the president during Christmas. Um, was it during that conversation with Mr. Nelvis that Mr. Nelvis also told you about telephone calls between Monica Walensky and the president? Or was that a different? I believe so. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that it was around the same time frame. At the uh, same time frame that Mr. Nelvis told you this? Yes. What did Mr. Nelvis tell you about phone calls between Monica and the president? Just that somehow he had, that that when, whenever they talk or they have spoken before on the phone or whatever between uh, Mr. Lewinsky and the president, and that uh, it was uh, sex was brought up that that was mentioned. Now specifics, I I don't know any specifics uh, as far as when it occurred or how many times or, or where his information was coming from. 
Uh, I assumed it was from uh, Ms. Lewinsky. Okay. Not sure. Did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you how he knew about the telephone conversations between Monica and the president that related to sexual matters? I don't recall if he told me specifically or if I just assumed it was from Mr. Nelvis talking with uh, Ms. Lewinsky. But okay. I don't know for sure. Okay. I just assumed. Well, do, do you remember... Um, do you remember ever asking Mr. Nelvis, how do you know this? I don't recall asking him that specifically. You're, you're talking about how he knows, he knew about the These telephone conversations between the President and Monica. Do you remember whether you ever asked him, how do you know this? I don't recall. Okay. Uh, I don't recall if I did or if it was just an assumption. I... Okay. Now, um, to the best of your memory, how did... Bionni Nelvis described these telephone conversations between the president and Monica. That was about the, uh, was, that was about the extent of the conversation. I remember it. I was just tell tell us to the best of your memory how Bionni Nelvis described the conversations between Monica Lewinsky and the president. To the best of your memory, I don't know that he described it. If he just made that statement well, about phone conversations. To the best of your memory, what did he say to you? And, and, and if you've told us already, just repeat it again. Well, that talking about uh, phone conversation between President and Ms. Lewinsky, that uh, it involves sex or sexual relation or, you know, sexual content. Okay. You know, uh, it's, um, it's all over. Do you remember the words Mr. Nelvis used when he described those telephone conversations? Uh... I, I couldn't say verbatim, uh, okay. something along those lines of that sex talk, but I can't say specific or okay. quoting. When, when you say sex talk, um, can you tell us what your understanding of this was? Um, are you familiar with the term phone sex? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. um, you are. And yeah. what do you understand phone sex to mean? Uh, you, call, uh, you call up one of the, uh, one of the numbers and uh, just you uh, talk about sex over, over the phone. I, I, okay. I, uh, um, do you understand, do you have an understanding of the term phone sex in relation to two people who know each other talking on the phone? Yes. Okay, and what do you understand that to mean? Uh, two people talking about uh, sex, whether it be uh, to stimulate each other or just in, you know, in general. Uh, Okay, Did, is that your understanding of what Mr. Nelvis was telling you about and with respect to President and Monica, or was it something else? Uh, that would be speculation. I, th th okay. There wasn't any specifics about the, about other than that, about the phone, the phone conversation, because uh, what I can remember, I didn't, I didn't care to, uh, to continue on with the, uh, that specific conversation. Okay, I don't want you to speculate. Um, but what I'm asking you to do is to try to remember, if you can, um, what words Mr. Nelvis used in describing the telephone conversations between Monica and the President. Can you do that? Uh, not specifically, just that it was, that it was about, you know, they talk about sex or they, something along those lines that specifically I can't. I can't recall the specific uh, word for word. Uh, mm -hmm. word. Um, what you talked about a moment ago in your own description of, of phone sex between people who know each other um, um, in, in terms of, you know, stimulation and so on, it, is that, was that your understanding of what was going on between President and Monica? Well, that... You Did know, you have an understanding of, of what Mr. Nelvis meant? Well, that would have... If, if I did, it would have been, uh, you know, just what I assumed or, you know, um, that was, uh, that he meant, um, if that's what you're asking. Okay. Um, I guess what I'm asking is what was your understanding based on your conversations with Mr. Nelvis, if you had an understanding of what the nature of these conversations were? My, my personal, uh, I would say, if, if I had to answer that question, it would be uh, 
you know, that I, I assumed that, that that's the type of uh, conversation that he was talking about. Now, that's just an assumption on my part because there was no specifics that I recall, uh, no specifics given uh, about the phone conversation. Okay. So that, that's, I guess it's safe to say that was an assumption of mine that, uh, that that's probably what they were talking about. But there again, just... Okay. And as you sit here today, do you have any memory of any of the words that Mr. Nelvis used in describing those conversations between the President and Monica? I've come about as close as I, that I would be able to. I, I, Which I is what? Um, they, uh, they would talk about sex. But, uh, I mean, I, I don't know how many different ways... Uh, That's your that best it, memory? Yeah, I mean, I, Okay. Did you have an understanding of how many conversations Mr. Nelvis was talking about between the President and Monica? I don't recall any specifics given. <clears throat> I don't know if it's one or several, I don't know. Okay. Do you have any memory as to whether Mr. Nelvis um, told you that there was more than one conversation of that nature between the President and Monica? I don't recall. There, there was, from what I recall, there was no specifics given. It was just a, a, state, a statement, uh, so to speak, was made. And, do you know um, where this conversation took place between you and Mr. Nelvis? Well, I can recall right around the pantry area. Mm -hmm. And was there anything in particular that, that led up to this conversation? Um, it seems like it would have been uh, there again concerning the Christmas time holiday and, and her wanting to come in, but I, I can't say specifically, but that's what it seems like. So is your best memory that this conversation between you and Mr. Nelvis took place sometime in the vicinity of last November, December of 97? From what I can recall, it seems like that, yes. Was anybody else present besides the two of you? You and Mr. In the Nelvis? immediate area? Yes, in earshot. Not that I know of. Okay. Um, how many times have you discussed with Mr. Nelvis this subject of telephone calls between Ms. Ms. Lewinsky and the President? The only one that I recall is uh, that one. Uh, I'm not saying that there may have not been another one, but I don't recall that one. It sort of sticks in my mind. Okay. Um, did Mr. Nelvis tell you anything about where um, the president would be when he called Monica, or if he called Monica? No. Did he tell you anything about where Monica was when these telephone calls took place? Not that I can recall, no. Okay. Um, did you tell anybody about what Mr. Nelvis told you? Except for during this process and uh, uh, the uh, dealing with the Justice Department, no. Okay. Not that, uh, not that I can remember. Okay, uh, so you didn't share this with any of your coworkers? Not that I recall, no. Did you ask Mr. Nelvis any questions when he told you about these telephone calls or calls? No, I was, from what I can remember, I was sort of taken back or shocked at it, and uh, the subject either changed or I left the vicinity or something, but that, that was that was something I wasn't expecting and uh, I didn't want to continue. Okay. Did um, Mr. Nelvis ever tell you anything about any relationship between Monica Lewinsky and the President? Other than um, I don't recall anything specific, but I've, uh, there's been so much on the news. I've seen so much, and uh, so I, I don't recall anything specific. Okay. Aside from Not what you've heard in the news, do you have any memory of any conversations with Mr. Nelvis um, during which he talked to you about? Um, a relationship between Monica and the President? Well, I'm sure that there were um, specifics. I, I can't recall any specifics, but I'm sure that there were, you know, conversations, and there has been with, with everything going on. Um, other than the ones that I've mentioned uh, that I can remember, I don't... Well, what you've told us about is the telephone conversations that, or conversation that, that Mr. Nelvis told you about between mm -hmm. the President and Monica, and you've told us that Monica um, wanted to come in and see the President around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that Mr. Nelvis told you about any 
relationship or connection between Monica and the president other than those two conversations? Not that I recall. Uh, back to the um, conversations surrounding Christmas, there could have been, but I don't recall any specifics or, or I, I can't say for sure that there were, though like I stated, I'm... Did Mr. Uh, Nelvis ever tell you that the president, um, that the president and Monica met in any place or time? I don't recall him ever telling me about any meetings. Did Nelvis ever tell you that Monica visited the president in the study? If he specifically told me that, mm -hmm. I don't recall any. I'd say that there wasn't, but I don't, don't recall. Did um, Mr. Nelvis ever tell you about finding any lipstick stain, tissues, towels, or stain materials anywhere in the vicinity of, of the study, the Oval Office, the bathroom, the pantry? That I can recall, Nelvis never told me anything like that. Have you ever heard that <clears throat> from anybody else? Through rumors, yes. Do you remember who you've heard that from? Um, uh, of course, I believe it was in one of the tabloids, uh, if I remember correctly, and uh, uh, Officer Chinnery, uh I believe, had mentioned that. To you? Or, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what Officer Chinnery told you about that? Uh, that um, I don't recall how the, what, the conversa what the conversation was, but that... Uh, um, we could have been talking about a, uh, <clears throat> you know, an article, or whatever. But that uh, something like it. Yes, he uh, he knew about the other because suppose because he was the one uh, supposedly that uh, Mr. Nell was told. He being can, Officer Chinnery. Yeah, from what I can recall. Okay, so Officer Chinnery told you um, that Nelvis had told him about finding lipstick stain. Finding something. Something. Uh, yeah. Do you remember what that something was? Uh, if I recall, tissues. Lipstick stained? I don't recall that. Okay. Um, do you have any memory of where the, the <coughs> tissues were supposed to have been found by Nelvis? No, I don't. Okay. No. Did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you whether the president gave Monica any presents? He made reference several times to uh, presidents, uh, excuse me, uh, gifts being exchanged between uh, uh, Nelvis and uh, and her and uh, excuse I me, between Nelvis, Nelvis and her or and the president, Nelvis and her, and okay. I believe uh, he mentioned the president also. Yeah, that, that uh, she would uh, had given him or would give him gifts. Him being the president. Yes. All right. Let's take it take it one one step at a time. Okay. Um, Nelson Nelvis told you that Monica had given him Nelvis presents. Yes. Did he I tell you remember. what? Did Nelvis tell you what the presents were? Uh, seems like it may have been uh, a tie or ties, but I'm one hundred percent sure on that. Mm -hmm. Did Nelvis ever show you any of the gifts that Monica had given him? I think he did show me a tie once that he said she had given me, had given him, um, if I recall correctly. Okay. Because we talk about uh, ties quite a bit. Um, are you aware of any other presents that Monica gave the president besides a tie? Uh, I'm not sure that she did give me that. I'm, that was, seemed to be the, the most common gift that was, you know, that was exchanged uh, or was given. Uh, Would well, you have a memory that Nelvis told you that, the, that Monica gave him Nelvis a tie? Yes. Okay, and and you have a memory that Nelvis showed you a tie that Monica had given him. Well, I can recall, yes. Okay. Um, did Nelvis ever tell you about any other presents that Monica gave him, Nelvis? Not that I can recall. Did Nelvis ever tell you? that he had given any presents to Monica? He, he, had, he has mentioned it, yes. Uh, specifics, I don't know that if, he ever, if he ever told me, I, or I, I just don't recall. So Nelvis has mentioned to you that, that 
he did give Monica presents, but you don't recall I specifics. So. I okay. believe so. But you have no specific knowledge as to what the presents were that Elvis gave Monica. No, I don't. Okay. Now, um, did Nelvis tell you that Monica gave the president presents? Yes. Okay. And what did Nelvis tell you that Monica gave the president? Uh, I don't know that he ever specifically told me or... I just assumed it was uh, a tie or something like that. I don't recall him ever telling me. Not that he didn't, but I don't recall him ever uh, giving me any specifics. Okay. Um, did Nelvis ever tell you um, that the president gave Monica any presents? Seems like he mentioned them exchanging gifts, uh, so I would assume that the president did give her one. Uh, I don't recall him ever mentioning anything, uh, anything specific. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just asking for your best memory, and, and don't assume anything, just what you remember. Do you have any memory um, that Nelvis told you um, that the president gave Monica a present. Um, and I think you stated a moment ago that, that you thought he had said something like that they exchanged, they, Monica and the president exchanged gifts, but only if you have a memory of that. Do you have any memory of... I don't recall anything specific, no. Okay. Do you have any memory of Nelvis mentioning to you, not assumptions, but memory, um, that Nelvis told you that the president gave Monica a gift or gifts? Seems like he did tell me that, um, but I can't be sure. Okay. Um, did Nelvis ever point out anything in the Oval Office or the area around the Oval Office that Monica had given to the President? Not that I recall. Did Nelvis, I, I may have asked you this before, but if, if I did, I apologize. Did Nelvis ever tell you that he saw the Monica, Monica and the president together anywhere? I don't remember him saying uh, anything like that. Did Nelvis ever mention to you that he had seen any physical contact between the president and Monica? Not that I recall. Okay, did Nelvis ever tell you anything about any plans on the part of Monica to move to New York? Uh, we talked about it uh, uh, briefly from what I can recall. Uh, <clears throat> what do you remember about that? Just that uh, she uh, was planning to move to New York to take a job. Um, and it seems like it may have been around the same time frame, uh, Christmas, uh, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And when we say Christmas, we mean Christmas 97? Yes. Okay, and um, did uh, Mr. Nelvis tell you why Monica wanted to get a job in New York? He never said why she wanted to get a job in New York, no. Did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you why Monica wanted to leave Washington? I don't know that he ever really stated that she wanted to leave. Okay. Um, did he tell you that she didn't want to leave Washington? No. Um, just that uh, she was planning on or was going to uh, be leaving. But if I remember correctly, that I think that at that time that was uh, common knowledge or, you know, the papers, but uh, I'm not sure. When you say common knowledge in the papers... Um well, there again, we're getting to the point where there's been so much that I've read and seen that, I, you know, I don't, I can't put specific dates on these. I can 
say what I think the, the time period was, but I'm not sure. So, um, do you remember? Um, you said a moment ago that um, Mr. Nelvis told you sometime around Christmas of '97 that Monica wanted to get a job in New York. I believe it was around that time frame because that was one lot of the time during the time a lot of the discussions were taking place. Okay. And uh, do you recall that this story about Monica Lewinsky became public? Um, in late January of 98, specifically January 21st of 98. Sometime in January, yeah. So you had a conversation with Bionni Nelvis before the story became public about Monica wanting to move to New York to get a it job. It seemed like it was right around Christmas, yes. So it would be before the story became public? Yes. Okay. Um, did um, Mr. Nelvis ever tell you whether anyone was helping Monica find a job in New York? Um, he made the comment uh, that um, uh, that the that Miss Lewinsky or she made the uh, the administration or the president or somebody nervous, um, um, and that uh, sort of led me to believe that, that you know that that was his opinion of why she was getting the job. But, uh, um, what's your best memory of what Mr. Nelvis said about Monica making? Who nervous? Well, just that uh, talking there again about uh, her moving to New York and taking a job is it something along the lines that uh, uh, that she makes the president or, or the administration nervous or they're they're worried about or something along those lines. I, you know, it's about as close as I can get. Did Elvis say why Monica made the president or the administration nervous? No, uh, of course. I had my own assumptions, but uh, I don't recall him saying, uh, well, I'm sorry, what was the question again? The question was, did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you why um, Monica made the if president? If I recall. Let me finish the question for okay. the record. Okay. Why uh, Monica made the president or the administration nervous? Um, I don't know if he specifically said, uh, I think he may have gave his opinion that it was because um, of everything that was going on at the time. Uh, what do you mean everything going on at the time? Well, um, with um, the, uh, the Jones, Paula Jones lawsuit and, and um, su the supposed relationship uh, that the President and Ms. Lewinsky was having, that, uh, uh, and, and that may have just been his opinion. I don't know where he was coming from. He never said... Uh, Never gave really stated any facts. Huh? Did um, Mr. Nelvis ever tell you whether anyone in the White House was helping Monica find a job in New York? I don't recall. Did he tell you whether anybody was helping her find a job in New York? Uh, I don't recall. I, um, you know, now knowing, uh, you know, from the paper a lot of facts. Uh, it's, hard to distinguish, but I don't recall uh, him saying anything specific. Did Mr. Nelvis tell you whether the president or anybody in the White House or the administration had any feeling about Monica moving to New York in the sense that um, that was something they wanted to happen or didn't want to happen or anything like that? I, I really don't recall. I think it would be speculating on my part. To um... Did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you whether the president had any concerns about Monica? Other than that uh, blank uh, statement that he made, I don't recall any specifics. Not that he didn't, but I don't, you know, I don't recall anything. When the subject of gifts between Monica and the president came up mm -hmm. between you and, and Mr. Nelvis, do you remember how that subject came up? Not specifically. Things um, about, you know, gifts between the president and Monica, Monica wanting to move to New York, things like that. The administration being nervous about um, was it being nervous about Monica? Was that mm -hmm. the way you remember it? Um, 
when Mr. Novus would tell you those things, is, can you tell us anything about um, his demeanor when he told you those things? Um, was he <coughs> concerned about Monica? Was he gossiping or something else? I mean, do you know what I mean? What way was he speaking it, to you? It seemed like it was just uh, talk, uh, you know, just uh, maybe gossip. It was just talk, pass the time, uh, okay. you know. I, I didn't sense any concern. Um, you mentioned a while ago that um, Mr. Nelvis told you um, that Monica had expressed a desire to come see the president around Christmas time, is that right? From what I can recall, yes. Okay. Do you know whether that visit ever took place? Uh, I would have, I'm going to have to assert the privilege on that. Okay. Sure. And that's the protective function privilege? Yes, ma'am. conversations that you had with Mr. Nelvis about Monica, do you have any recollection of anybody else being present during any of them? What, uh, you're talking conversations in general? Yes, about Monica. Was there ever another party to the conversation, any other person present when any of these conversations took place? If you're talking just general, just general conversations, uh, possibly the other steward uh, on these specific uh, conversations that we've been dealing with, that I've given you specifics on, I don't recall anyone. Do you ever remember talking to Glenn Mays about Mo Monica Lewinsky? Not that I can recall. No, that wasn't. Just, just didn't happen much. Okay. And um, do you have any memory of Glenn Mays ever being present during any conversations between you and Mr. Nelvis about Monica Lewinsky? Not that I recall. Okay, you mentioned a little while ago an incident um, at the Northwest Gate. When did that occur in, in terms of time? What month? What part of the year? December of 97. Uh, and um, what do you know about what happened? Were you working that day? Yes. Where were you working? Uh, I was posted at, uh, at the Oval Office okay. uh, post between. And what happened that day, as far as you, you were concerned? Um, what were you asking specific? Did you receive any calls? And how did you first become aware of the situation? Um, I first became aware of it um, because of a phone call. Uh, one of the other officers phoned me in on uh, uh, what he knew at the time of some of the uh, some of the some of the things that were going on at the Northwest Gate. Okay, who called you? Uh, Officer Chinnery was was one that called me on talking about the specific incident. Um, um, you know, Did filling me in on uh, on what on the incident. He was the one. Yes. Okay. And and is that the phone that Tenery called you on? Yes. And where is that phone person. located? Okay. And where was Officer Tenery based on what you knew? Uh, the West Wing lobby. And um, you said Tenery called you? Mm hmm What did Officer Tenery tell you when he spoke to you? Uh, just that an incident had happened uh, at the at the Northwest Gate. Um, Did he tell you when it had happened? I'm sorry? Did he tell you when it had happened? Uh, it, it, it had just happened uh, 
during that shift uh, of the conversation. Do you remember what shift you were working that day? Don't recall, but I would s probably would have been day work. Yeah, day being the 6.30? 6.30 to 2.30, yes. Okay, 6.30 a.m. Yeah. And um, do you remember what day of the week this was? I think a Saturday. Okay. I believe that's when it was. Okay, you were working a day off that day then? Yes. All right, and um, what did Officer Tenery tell you on the phone? Well, just that there had... Uh, there was an incident in Northwest Gate um, uh, that involved um, uh, the president or, or appointments or something along those lines. Um, he, at that time, from what I can recall, he was um, putting all the pieces together and finding out all the information himself. What did he tell you that had happened? Did he tell you who was involved? Any particular guest? I don't, I don't, re I don't recall, but I'm not sure. Okay. Did you ever receive a call from Officer Hall? Yes. Is that how it began? Did you hear from him before Chinnery or after Chinnery? Before. So you spoke to Hall first. Yeah. So let's start there. What do you remember about your conversation mm -hmm. with Hall? I got a call from Officer Hall uh, stating that Miss um, Curry had a guest out there, and, and the, he could not locate Miss Curry. Uh, yes. And was Miss Curry working that day? Yes. Where was she? At that specific time, I don't know when I got the call. Had you seen her already that day? Yes. Um, do you know what she was doing at work that day? Uh, no, okay. I, they, they, don't, they don't tell me. <laughs> okay. Um, had you spoken to her already that day, to Betty? Probably. I would say I normally do in the morning. Did you go look for her after you received yes. your call from Officer Hall? Mm -hmm. And did you find her? Yes. And did you speak to her? Yes. What did you say to her? Uh, that she uh, had, or there was an appointment uh, for her uh, out at the uh, Northwest Gate, something along those lines. Okay, and um, did she say anything to you? Um, if I recall correctly, something along the lines that um, I'll be out there in a minute, or I'll be with them in a minute, or something, something along those lines. That, that, that's not. Specific. Did you tell her um, the sex of the person who was there to see her? That was male or female? I don't recall uh, if I did or not. I, I don't recall if I if I don't think I knew at that time, but I'm not sure. I don't, I don't recall. I'm, I don't know. Okay. Do you know whether um, you told Betty that there was a woman there, to, a woman to see her? Could have. I don't. I don't know. I, you know, it's. Do you know? Um, did Betty tell you um, to give any message to the person waiting for her? Not that I recall. Just that um, you know, I'll be with, I'll be with the person, or I'll be out there in a minute, something along those lines. Uh, I don't recall anything specific, uh, message being given to me to pass on or anything. Okay. What did, did you talk to Hall after that? Yes, I, uh, if I recall correctly, I called him back. And, and, and he was at the Northwest Gate? Yes, and advised him that uh, uh, I had uh, located her and passed on the, uh, the message or the information. And what did Hall say? Um, I don't know if it was during that conversation or if I got a call back. Some, uh, sometime during the conver a conversation, uh, he told me that, uh, that the guest uh, had left. And I don't recall if, if, if you mentioned uh, what sex it was or not, I don't know, but uh, that they had left. When Hall told you that, did you convey that to Betty? Yes. Did you do that in person or on the phone? In person. Okay, and your prior conversation with Betty was in person as well? Yes. Okay, so you basically just walked down to the area outside the Oval Office where her office is? Her office and ambassador, yes. Okay, and did she say anything? At which time? When uh, you came back and said to her, your guest has left. I think she may have said, uh, well, they'll be back or they'll come back or something along those lines. That seems like that's what she said. I'm, 
Do you know if she had any reaction to this person leaving or to this person at all? Was it? Uh, it seemed like uh, sort of maybe an unpleasant uh, feeling. I uh, just that's just what I'm observed or it seemed like. Uh, I may be speculating on that. Okay. Um, did did Betty seem annoyed? Or not particularly happy to see this person? I would say not particularly happy. If, if I had to put in words, that, that there again is sort of, sort of speculation on my part. Okay. Um, what happened next? Um, was the next event your call from Tinnery, or did something else happen? If I recall correctly, that that's... Uh, I got a call from Officer Chinnery. Uh, Do you remember how long after your talk with Betty, your last talk with Betty, you heard from Chinnery? It wasn't an awful long time. I can't say specific, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. I, mm -hmm. I don't know any specifics. It wasn't, a, it didn't seem like it was a long period of time. It wasn't, I don't recall that it was, it was hours or anything like that. What did Officer Chinnery tell you? Uh, that uh, something in, that uh, had happened out at the Northwest Gate involving the president or an appointment to that office, um, you know, it, it made it sound like, uh, you know, it was a major incident. Uh, mm -hmm. I think at that time he may have still been piecing it all together himself. Did he tell you, did Officer Chinnery tell you whether the guest had been told anything or had overheard anything, any remark? Looking back on it, it's going to be hard to say, but I, I think it, um, I think that he did tell me that uh, the appointment may have overheard something, or, but I'm not sure. Knowing now and looking back on it, I, I, I really can't recall specifically. Do you have any recollection as to what that person was supposed to have overheard? Just uh, concerning uh, another appointment. Uh, that was in that office. And if I was Is that another appointment with, excuse me? If I can recall, that's what, another appointment for that office. Okay, did Chinnery tell you whether someone else was visiting, whether um, the guest overheard that the president was visiting with someone else? Uh, it seems like it, yes. Uh, you know, knowing the facts now and, and being asked about it, I, uh, it's hard for me to distinguish what, you know, uh, exactly what happened or, you know, what happened or who said what. Did Chinnery tell you who the guest was at the gate? I don't recall a lot of, I don't recall specifics. At that um, point when you were speaking to Chinnery, was it your understanding or impression that the guest at the gate was a woman? It was my impression, yes. What, did you have any understanding as to who that person, that woman, was at the gate to see? Um, I had uh, a feeling or an impression about, yes, who it was. Uh, and who was that? Uh, that it w may have been uh, Miss Lewinsky. Okay, and did, did you, did Chinnery tell you who she was there to see that day? I just gathered that it was an uh, appointment for um, Betty Curry or the president. I, that's, did Chinnery tell you who the president was with at that time? I don't recall. Um, did Chinnery tell you whether Miss Lewinsky or the guest, the female guest at the gate, um, overheard the name of the person who was visiting with the president at that time? I don't recall the specifics of it. Do you remember the name of the person who was visiting with the president at that time? Yes. Who? Um, last name Mondale. Okay. First name? Female? Yeah. Eleanor? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, did... Okay. Sorry. <laughs> did... Um, did Eleanor Mondale's name come up in your conversation with Tinnery? Uh, I don't know. I can't, I can't recall. Probably sometime uh, during the course of the day, but I don't recall specifically it coming up. Not to say that it didn't. 
Did Officer Tinnery tell you that the guest, the female guest at the gate, was upset? From what I can recall, yes. Did he tell you what she was upset about? Uh, possibly over, uh, overhearing uh, a conversation uh, involving another appointment to that office. Okay. And that office correctly. meaning the president? Yes. Okay. So the best of your understanding was that Officer Tinnery um, told you that the female guest at the gate had overheard a reference to another guest um, that the president was having at that time. From what I can recall, yes. Okay. And do you know whether um, Officer Tinnery told you um, whether the female guest at the gate had heard the name of the person who was supposed to have been visiting with the president at that time? I don't know. The, uh, I don't remember a lot of the specifics on the uh, small issues like that. I, I can't say for sure. Uh, Is there anything else about that conversation with Officer Chinnery that you remember? Just the overview that, uh, uh, that he was piecing the, together everything that happened out there and uh, that there was a major incident out there uh, uh, that involved the, the president or, or uh, appointment with the president or, or uh, his secretary. When you say incident, did Chinnery describe to you what the incident was? What, what does the word incident mean? Uh, well, something that uh, uh, was unfavorable. I mean, uh, it was not a good thing. I mean, Did he say the guest was upset? From what I can recall, yes, but... Did he say the guest had left? Uh, I, I believe so. Did he say anything else that you haven't told us that you remember? We talked about the incident, but uh, as far as specifics, uh, you know, I just remember the general conversation. I, I think at that point he was still trying to piece it together himself. Um, this is Officer Chinnery? Yes. Um, is there anything else about your conversation with Officer Chinnery that you remember that you haven't told us? Uh, that day? Not, oh, oh, that um, later on, and I believe it may have been on the second or third uh, conversation, I, Again, I don't remember all the specifics because it, at that time it was just something interesting that was happening. Um, I believe later on he did tell me that uh, um, that uh, the president uh, or his secretary and or his secretary uh, was upset or got involved, and and I believe uh, Betty came out and, and spoke to him or said something to him. Meaning Chinnery. Yes, what I can recall. Okay, did Chinnery tell you what Betty said to him? If I call, recall correctly, it was um, that everything is okay or it's calmed down, something along those lines, uh, from what I can recall. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't go into a lot of specifics on that conversation. Yeah, did you ever have any conversations with Betty that day? About that About incident? The incident? No. Okay. Um, Did you ever hear whether anybody had met with Betty Curry that day? About the incident? Yes. Who? Uh, a captain and a sergeant from, uh, from the Uniform Division. And do you know um, <clears throat> their names? I, I was told that it was, uh, though I didn't see him, I was told it was Sergeant uh, Williams and Captain Purdy. Okay, can you tell us anything about their conversation with Betty Curry, Williams and Purdy? I, I, I wasn't there. Okay. I, I wasn't in, in the room. Okay. Um, without telling us any, any privileged matters, did anybody ever tell you anything about those conversations? There that conversation between Betty and Purdy and Williams. Well, that it was it was about the incident and uh, uh, that the uh, president, I believe, had. Uh, Without telling us any privileged matters, um, if, you, if you can. Well. Uh, if you want to step outside the room, that would be okay. Okay. Well, could you re? Could you sure. ask the question again? Sure. What I'm going to ask you is whether you know anything about. Um, the conversation between Purdy, Williams, and Betty. Just 
about the incident. Mm -hmm. um, Is there anything that you can tell us about that conversation? Uh, the only thing that I can tell you beyond the, uh, the privilege would be uh, that it was con uh, concerning the, the inc that incident at the Northwest Gate. Okay. And um, is it the protective function privilege that you're asserting here? Yes. Okay. Um, Could I uh, step outside yes, and meet you with can. him? Sure. You're off the record at 401.56. Back with record 407.05. Okay. Officer Tyler, you've had an opportunity to consult with your lawyers, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, we were talking about um, conversations between Betty Curry and Captain Purdy and Sergeant Williams that day, the incident at the Northwest Gate that you're telling about, us about. Is there anything that you can tell us about Betty Curry's conversation with Williams and Purdy? Only that it involves the... Uh an incident to Northwest Gate. Uh, anything further, uh, I'm going to have to uh, claim the privilege on. Do you know about any other conversations that Betty Curry had that day with anybody else other than um, Williams, Purdy, and Hall? Tinnery. Tinnery, sorry, Tinnery. Uh, I don't know of any other uh, conversations, no. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you can tell us about this episode that day um, and its aftermath, all the things that happened afterwards that's not privileged? Uh, is there anything specifically you're looking for? Um, that's a wrap, well, did you have any more talks with anybody that day about it? Yes. Okay, who did you talk to? Uh, I spoke with uh, Officer Chinnery, um, and at a later date, I don't, I don't recall if it was that day or later date, I'm not sure, but... Uh, uh, Officer Hall, uh, and then it was, um, it, it, it came out, so I'm sure I uh, had a conversation with someone, uh, you know, other people, I mean, uh, at that point, once it came out that it had happened, I could have had a conversation with, uh, um, you know, a lot of people about it. I, I, I try not to talk um, much about it, except for with uh, Officer Chenry and Officer Hall, um, and then uh, anyone else that would ask me about it, uh, uh, you know, I would uh, go into some details, but I didn't go around, you know, starting conversations about it. Were you ever given any instruction or suggestion not to speak about this incident? Uh, directly, no. Indirectly? No. I, uh, there may have been. I heard that <coughs> there, uh, there may have been some talk about it, but I was never told. Directly okay. or indirectly, no. Do you know whether anybody else in the Secret Service was told not to speak about this incident? I don't know if anyone was told or not. Did you hear from anybody that that they were not supposed to talk about this? Um, it seems like um, Officer Hall or Officer Chinnery or both of them may have mentioned it. Uh, I don't know if they were just... I would, I would speculate if I went any further on why or where or how or, you know. okay. um, when you spoke to Officer Chinnery later mm -hmm. that day um, was it in person or on the phone? what I recall most of it was uh, uh, by a phone okay and what did you talk about? just an overview or, or you just about the incident just in general um, just rehashing it or just Did you learn anything talking. else from Chinnery that in, during your later conversations that day with him? Ex ex well, except for what, you know, about Betty uh, coming out and saying something to him. Uh, nothing that I didn't at that point uh, had already learned about the incident uh, that I can recall. I, I could have, but mm -hmm. the, this was all being pieced together over a, a day and possibly a uh, second day, you know, to getting all the facts. And, uh, Did you ever hear what had happened out at the Northwest Gate? Yes. What did you hear? Well, that uh, uh, an appoint, uh, an appointment overheard about another appointment that was uh, in with the president, and uh, 
Did uh, you ever hear the name of the appointment? Later. Who? Uh, Lewinsky. Mr. Okay. Lewinsky. Do you remember who told you that? I believe it, I believe it was Hall, okay. Officer Hall. I, but it was I Monica believe. Lewinsky who came to the Northwest Gate that day. I believe that's who I heard it from. I know he was one of them. I don't, I can't recall. Okay. Did you ever hear anything more specific about what Monica Lewinsky overheard at the Northwest Gate that day, above what you've already told us? Just that there was, a, uh, that there was another appointment uh, visiting with uh, Betty or the president uh, that was, was the upsetting issue. Mm -hmm. Well, earlier you said visiting with the president. Um, which is it, visiting with the president or visiting with Betty or the president? Well, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, it's it's all it's one and the same. Um, you know, uh, since he's her secretary, the, mm -hmm. uh, the appointments, you know, most of them, uh, what I know, go through her. Okay. So that that's what I mean by, by either or. Mm -hmm. um, when you spoke to Hall later that day, um, did you do you remember anything about that conversation that you can tell us? Uh, nothing real specific, just rehashing what had happened and talking about what had happened. Uh, uh, nothing r really uh, specific that, uh, other than, uh, uh, I remember correctly, he said that it involved him, that he was in, you know, very much involved. Uh, he who? Officer Hall. Uh -huh. Um, other than that, just about the incident, I, I, um, okay. right now I can't recall any, any more specifics, so. Going back to Bionni Nelvis for a moment, did Bionni Nelvis ever tell you, um, or talk to, excuse me, about the Paula Jones case? There was, yeah, there was some talk about it, uh, just general conversations that, a couple of people would have, you know, after you read something in the newspaper or something like that, you know. Uh, How many times do you think you talked to Bionni Novus about the Paula Jones case? God, I have no idea. Is it more than once? Probably. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember anything that you talked about with Bionni about the Paula Jones case? Well, just that um, I remember correctly, he led me to believe that uh, it was his feeling or that somehow this was all tied together. Um, you know, the, uh, the uh, Paula Jones case and, and, and this, if I recall correctly, something along those lines. And that, when you say, you know, and this, what, what are you referring to? Paula Jones case and what were tied together? And, and uh, uh, Miss Lewinsky, uh, somehow, directly, indirectly, whatever. I, I don't know if that was just his opinion or what. What do you think Bionni Nelvis meant when he said that the Paul Jones case and, and the Miss Lewinsky matter were tied together? What did he mean? Uh, I would be assuming or speculating to... What did he to, say? What do you remember that he said to you? Just that... Uh, um, if I recall correctly, just that... Um, this, the issue was Miss Lewinsky may have not uh, ever been an issue if it wasn't for the uh, for the uh, Paul Jones case, something along those lines. Uh, that's not specific, but it seems like it was something along those lines. Now, when when Bonnie Nova said that Miss Lewinsky would not be an issue if not for the Paul Jones case, what did he mean by Miss Lewinsky being an issue? An issue with who? With with this. Well, in this, what I, I took it that, you know, it may have not ever come out um, about Miss Lewinsky if it wouldn't be for that. Now that, you know, it's just, this conversation is, is very, uh, I don't remember much about it. I, mm -hmm. just, I just remember vaguely uh, having a conversation along those, along those lines. Did this conversation with Bonnie Novus about the Paul Jones case and Ms. Lewinsky happen before the Monica Lewinsky matter became a public matter in late January of 98? I don't know. I can't, re I, I can't recall specific uh, 
seems like, uh, I don't know, I can't, I can't recall specifically. I, I, I don't know when the conversation took place. Uh, and well, I can't put a, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Well, you said a moment ago that, that the Ms. And I, I don't want to misquote you, but and you tell me what you said, but Ms. Lewinsky, um, the Monica Lewinsky issue would not have become known or would not have come out um, if not for the Paula Jones case. Is that something that... That, that, that is what I recall, basically, that, that was said, from what I can recall. Uh, what does it mean to come out? Was this coming out, like, in January of 98 or coming out in the White House before that, that people found out about her or what? That, well, that... This is, uh, this is somewhat speculation that, that uh, they may have not been worried about her or, you know, if it wasn't for her. Somehow it was tied with the Paul Jones uh, case, uh, something along those lines that that is the reason why she was such an issue, mm -hmm. you know. And is that something that was said before Monica Lewinsky became a matter of, of you know, being in all the newspapers and on television, is that something Bonnie Nell was talked to you about before she became a household word in, in January I, of 1998? I, 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 don't, I don't recall. I don't know. There's very little that I recall about that, uh, those converse, that conversations. I can't put a time frame on I, I have no idea. Since the Monica Lewinsky um, matter became public, specifically on January 21st of 90, 1998. Mm -hmm. Have you had any conversations with Bayani Nelvis about Monica Lewinsky? Not that I can recall specifically other than, you know, just general uh, what may be read in the paper or, uh, <clears throat> you know, something along those lines. We didn't get into to many specifics at all. Uh, it, just, it just sort of, you know, like an unwritten rule, it, it just best not to be talked about other than, you know, what was, you know, just reading the paper or a comment was made on about mm -hmm. that or something along those lines. Do you, you know. remember anything specific that Mr. Nelvis has said about Monica Lewinsky after this matter became public in January of 98? Um... Not to say that there hasn't been, but I don't recall anything specific. Uh, there's been so much in the news and everywhere that uh, it's all mixed up. Since this um, matter became public um, in January of 1998, have you talked to Betty Curry about Monica Lewinsky? No. And have you talked to the president about Monica Lewinsky since this matter became public? <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to ask any questions that you have? Ms. Worth asked you about your conversation with Mr. Nelvis regarding the telephone conversation or in-person conversation regarding sexual content. Remember that series of questions? Mm -hmm. You'll have to say yes or no. Yes. I'm sorry. You indicated at the time that you did not want to carry on the conversation when Mr. Nelvis told you that. What I can recall, yes. Is that accurate? Yes. And why was that? Well, um, it was just something I didn't want, want to know. I, uh, uh, it was just something in, I didn't want to know. I didn't think it was, uh, it was any of my business, uh, you know, when, when you're getting into an area like that, I, you know, just, I'm sort of just taken back by it, you know, shocked, or whatever you want to say. I, Where were you two positioned at the time that Mr. Nelvis was telling you that? Well, I, what I can remember, right, right uh, at the pantry. And do you know how that topic came up? Uh, 
as I think I've uh, said, uh, I believe it was there again talking about um, uh, Christmas time visit, uh, wanting to visit, uh, and uh, if I recall correctly, then it came out something about uh, the phone conversation. If I can recall correctly, that's that's about the time frame. So he volunteered to you something about phone conversation between Lewinsky and the president having to do with sexual matter or being of a sexual matter. Yeah, he, yes. How did he say this to you? Well, if I, if I can recall correctly, we were uh, just talking about, um, uh, you know, her wanting to come in or whatever, and, and somehow the topic came up about uh, uh, them talking on the phone. I don't know if I, if I asked the question, you know, do they talk on the phone or, or what? And, um, and I believe I asked a question, and at the time, instantly being just curious about, you know, what uh, two people like that would have to talk about. I, I'm sorry? About what, being curious about what two people like that would have to talk about. If I recall correctly, that's when the statement was made. When they I talk about call. sex. Or yeah. sexual matters. Yeah. And so it was actually a question that you put to him. From what I can recall. Uh, and you were thinking at the time before you asked the question, the president and Lewinsky, what would they have in common yes. to talk about over the phone? Yes. Is that accurate? Yeah, from uh, more of a curiosity standpoint, you know, I mean, that's which would be legitimate question what two people like it would have to talk about yes for and I can recall he makes his answer you don't want to hear anymore <clears throat> does he react in any way when you suggest to him somehow that that's enough I don't want well, to go there I don't, I don't know that I did that uh, I can't recall it could have been uh, the conversation was just changed uh, could have been uh, I walked walked away or could have been that uh, you know someone walked past us and was and uh, you know it I, I don't recall specifically saying I, I don't want to know anymore uh, but I do recall thinking that but I don't think I said that specifically Is somehow it, it was changed the conversation was changed or ended somehow do you think that that's a pretty important topic, so to speak, for a steward to be relating to you? Well, I think that's a, uh, I mean, it's a topic that's, uh, that's none of my business. It, would you say or agree with the characterization that it's an explosive topic to be sharing with you? I would say it would be an explosive topic to be sharing with, with anyone. In view of that, was Mr. Nelvis whispering this to you? I mean, how was he sharing this to you? Can you describe that for us? Um, it wasn't a loud conversation. Uh, lower than normal conversation or, or voice level. But did that answer your question? Somewhat, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find out whether you saw or got the impression that there was any hesitation in him in sharing that topic, that explosive topic, with you. In other words, did he look both ways? Did he uh, show, did he grimace in any way? Not that I, nothing that stands out in my, in my mind, no. Now, it, I represent to you that on Wednesday, January 21st, 1998, there was publicity surrounding the allegations <coughs> surrounding Lewinsky and the president. In view of that representation, in a view of what you testified moments ago about this topic that Nelvis told you about, do you recall thinking about the conversation again when you first saw it publicized? Yes. And what do you recall thinking?
Well, just that uh, that was uh, information I wish I didn't have. Something along those lines. Did you think to yourself, Nelvis may have been right? Well, I, I guess uh, you could always think that. Uh, if you'd asked me whether I knew hard and fast whether what type of relationship, I don't know, but... I'm not asking that. I'm okay. only asking what do you recall your mental impressions were when you read or see on TV uh, in view of your conversation with Nelvis? In view of that conversation, uh, yes, you could think that. And did you? Yeah, to a certain extent. I was, uh, yeah, it, it always makes you wonder. Nelvis still working at the White House? Yes. When was the last time you saw him? Yesterday. Does he know you're here or? Not that I know of. I didn't tell him. Is he still in the same assignment? Yes. Final questions. Have you heard from anybody else other than Mr. Nelvis anything about a relationship between Monica Lewinsky and the president? Can you be more specific? Has anybody else talked to you besides Nelvis about a relationship between Just Monica the, uh, and the president? The normal rumors that you hear that uh, you know that's been going on. But Do you um, remember the names of anybody who said anything about? A relationship between Monica and the president? That has specifically said anything? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's rumors have been have been uh, flying for months, uh, you know. I, about that? Yeah. Okay, do you remember anything specific that anybody said about uh, a relationship between mm -hmm. Monica and the president? When I was, uh, when I was being trained, it was, uh, if I recall correctly, it was brought up. In your uh, training? By, <coughs> by the person that was training me. Um, Who was that person? Uh, Officer Verna, Sandy Verna. Mm -hmm. um, was this training at a training facility or on the job training at the on White the House? On the job, just on the job. Somewhere in that area, yes. Sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, yes, somewhere in that area. What did she say? Uh, I don't recall exactly, just that, um, there, that there was uh, a female that, uh, um, that was supposedly visiting the president a lot, something along those lines. Uh, mm -hmm. Did she give you any advice or any suggestion no, or anything like that? No. <clears throat> was it, you said it came up during your training. Was was this this information that was imparted to you for for the sake of just your knowing it, or was it given to you with any instructions or any just, suggestions? Just to know, just for personal knowledge. Did Sandy Byrne give you the name of the person, of the the woman? I don't know if she did or not. She probably did, but I don't, I don't recall it. The name, along with the rumors, uh, you've heard, I've heard the name for you know quite a while, being you know, tossed around. Was Sandy Bruno the first person to tell you about Monica Lewinsky? I don't know if she was the first, but one of the, one of the first few. Mm -hmm. And beyond telling you that there was a woman who came to visit the president, um, first of all, do you know whether Sandy Bruno was referring to Monica Lewinsky when she spoke to you? Uh, if I recall correctly, I believe she did state the name, or, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, Beyond Sandy telling you that, that this was someone who visited the president, um, did she tell you where Monica visited the president? I don't recall any specifics. Uh, that was, that's quite a while ago. Did 
did Sandy Brennan tell you anything else other than what you've just mentioned? Not that I can recall, nothing specific, uh, just generalization. Okay, other than Sandy Brennan, anybody else that, that comes to mind who spoke to you about a relationship between Monk and the president? Uh, well, I, uh, do you want me to say all the names of the people that uh, that I've heard rumors from? Is that what you're looking for? Because that's okay. that's what it would that's what it would be. Okay. Beyond um, you know beyond what I've, uh, the individuals that, uh, that we've spoken about quite a bit here today. Okay. Why don't you tell me first off um, what you've heard? Let's start there, and then we can identify some names. Early on, that. Uh, there was an uh, alleged relationship between uh, the president and this intern. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe I was told that she, at the time she was working in the East Wing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, uh, things along, along that line. Anything more specific than that? That they would uh, meet, uh, or that she would go uh, to the office. You know, it's, I know it's generalization, but I mean, that's that's what that's what rumors are. Okay. Okay. And have you um, received any information concerning um, an observation by Gary Byrne that's covered by the protective function privilege? I'm sorry, what was the question? Have you received any information about an observation by Gary Byrne, Officer Gary Byrne, that is covered by the protective function privilege? The only thing I know about that is it r was rumored that... Uh, All right, just don't, without giving us any, any privilege just, information, do you know? Just rumor. Okay. All right. And, and to your knowledge, is that covered by the protective function privilege? From what I understand, it is. Okay. What I understand. Other than the incident at the Northwest Gate, have you heard of any other incidents at any of the gates involving Monica Lewinsky? Um, uh, it was mentioned to me the other day that, uh, uh, that during this time uh, she would make entry at uh, the Southwest Gate. Um, but as far as any other incidents, do you know any officers who've encountered Monica at the Southwest Gate? Uh, Officer Poppy, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure there's others. Um, I don't want to know specific, but I'm mm -hmm. uh, sure there's others. Have you talked to Officer Poppy? The other day, uh, briefly in passing, yeah. Did he tell you anything that he had seen? Just that... Uh, uh, she entered there from time to time, and uh, that he uh, dealt with her concerning that that entry from time to time. Okay. Back to your question. Uh, mm -hmm. Because of what all is going on, there's a lot of talk about it. You know, so uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of people talking about it, and so I, there's several people I'm sure I've talked to, but you know, I mean, that you you can't get away from it down there now. Okay. All right. I don't have anything further. Thank you very much. Deposition included. Four thirty-six. Four thirty-five. Thirty-nine. We'll return to more of the videotape depositions by Secret Service agents assigned to the White House, but first a look at some programming later this week. Are we going to let the Grinches steal Christmas? <laughs>